listen, kids. Things aren't what they seem. Don't be fooled. There's a big deception going on. And you're involved in it, but I just thought you ought to know it. There is going to be a dance this evening. And I would like you all to come and sing and dance. Won't you come and play with me? Nowadays we live in a non-participative culture and we don't do very much singing and dancing. Now the thing is, ought this to be allowed? We've been brought up, you see, in a cultural context in which the universe is presided over by somebody serious. And it's only very, very occasional obscure references in the Jewish and Christian scriptures to the idea that God dances. Of course, in Hindus, they know Shiva dances, and all the gods dance, and they're represented in the, in the dance. You owe it to yourself or to your family or to someone or other to sing and dance. See, that's the trouble. When a child comes into the world, the parents play an awful game on it. Instead of being honest, they say, we've made such great sacrifices for you. Here we are, we've supported you, we've uh, paid for your education, and you're an ungrateful little bastard. And uh, the child feels terribly guilty because what we do is we build into every human being the idea that existence is guilt. And they say that guilt is ontological. If you're not feeling guilty, you're not guilty. And that was because Papa and Mama said, look at all the trouble you've caused us. You shouldn't dare to exist. You have no rights. But maybe we'll give you some out of the generosity of our heart, so that you'll be permanently indebted to us. And so everybody goes around with that sort of thing in their, in their background, unless they had different kinds of papas and mamas who didn't play that trick on them. But so many papas and mamas do do that. And if they don't do it, somebody else does. Auntie comes around and says, you don't realize what your father and mother have done to you. You think you know you can just stay around here and goof off. But they have sweated blood to uh, give you your clothes and food and so on, and you, you ought to be grateful for it. But that's not the way to make people grateful. They won't be grateful that way. They'll imitate gratefulness. They'll go and put on a big show and say, oh, thank you so much, I feel so indebted to you, and so on and so forth, and they'll make it look good. But it isn't real, because, actually, one's father and mother had a great deal of fun bringing you to be. We hope they did. They have no reason to complain about all these things and try and make the children feel guilty. But you see, it is an amazing thing in our culture that everybody is afflicted with ontological guilt. And there are certain clergy who are absolute experts in making you feel guilty. You have to watch always what games people are playing. Now you see, the thing is that really is a puzzle is that they don't admit they're playing games. And when a person is playing games and doesn't admit that they're playing games, then you have some kind of a of a trickster who um, isn't really being fair to. Now, of course, the game, that this game is not a game, has a certain kind of fascinating quality to it. How mixed up can we all get? Let's try. I, I would like to go insane and be as insane as anybody has ever been and uh, be the farthest out crazy nut in the world. See, that's a game. But it's not a good game. It's a... Uh, a game being played by a person who didn't really understand that everyday life was a game too. And I think the most important thing is to admit this. Everybody must play. It's like the whole game of life we're all involved in, it's only a game. So the point is therefore that you can do everything you have to do in this spirit. Don't make a distinction between work and play. Regard everything that you're doing as play. And don't imagine for one minute that you've got to be serious. 